Being an archaeologist can be a cold and dirty job. But if you were to ask an archaeologist, they'd happily tell you that all the cold and miserable days are worth it for the incredible things they sometimes discover. There's seemingly no end to the things our ancestors left behind for us to find, and we've packaged together some of the best of them for you in this video. We're starting with the Toltec Mounds, which can be found in the lengthily titled Plum Bayou Mounds Archaeological State Park in Scott, Arkansas, USA. They look like natural hills from a distance, but they're hand-built earthen mounds, and they were created by the people of the Plum Bayou culture more than 1,400 years ago. The tallest of them measures almost exactly 50 feet, but it's likely that they were a little taller when they were new. The mounds are likely to have served a variety of purposes including ceremonial, cosmological, religious, and political. One of the largest of them was found to be full of animal bones when it was excavated, so historians think it might have been used as a feasting mound. While mounds like this are often associated with human burials, only one of them has thus far been confirmed as a burial mound. Their positions were specifically chosen to align with the sun as it rises in the morning. The name Toltec Mounds comes from an incorrect assumption made at the time of their discovery, which is that the Toltec Indians from Mexico made them. By the time the mistake was realized, the name had stuck. A lot of what you need to know about the lion tombs of Dayton is contained in their name. They're tombs. They're marked with carvings of lions, and they're in Dayton. Today, that part of the world is known as Al Ula, and it's in Saudi Arabia. Historians in Saudi Arabia once believed that the tombs were created by the mysterious Nabataeans during the first century. But the current theory is that they're the work of an even older civilization. We know that the Dayton Kingdom existed as long as 2,600 years ago because it's mentioned in the Book of Ezekiel in the Hebrew Bible. The entire fortified city of Dayton was discovered buried beneath the region's sands by modern-day archaeologists, but the tombs themselves are on a mountainside called Jabal Dayton next to it. The people of Dayton believed that the souls of the dead would reach the heavens faster if they were buried in the mountains. This same belief was shared by the Lycians in Turkey. Most of the tombs are unmarked save for the names of the people laid to rest within them, but those with lions are believed to have belonged to the richest and most powerful members of the ancient society. There are many theories about the so-called Angels of Ekbalam in Mexico, but we can't be sure if any of them are true. We know that the carvings were made by the Maya, but we don't know what they represent. The name Ekbalam means Black Jaguar, which is said by some to be the name of the ancient city's founder. It's thought that as many as 18,000 people once lived here at its peak in the 8th century. The Angels of Akbalam is the name given to a pair of figures depicted in the stucco facade of the main entrance to the city's Acropolis. They're human men in ceremonial attire, but they have feathered wings attached to their backs. They can't be angels in the Christian sense of the word, though, as they were created before Europeans arrived in Mexico and brought Christianity with them. There are a few possibilities here. One of them is that Europeans had a pre-Columbian contact with Mexico, possibly travelers from Turkey, where traditional depictions of angels as feathered humanoids appear in scriptures and art as far back as the 4th century. A more likely explanation is that the winged figures represent entities from unknown aspects of Mayan mythology, and the resemblance to angels is a coincidence. Here's an ancient example of a sacred Roman site turning into a brick factory. The site, which is around 1900 years old, is close to Priors Hall Park in Corby, England. The area is already known for its Roman connections, with 40 large ancient Roman villas found by archaeologists between 2011 and 2016. This old sacred site was found in December 2020 behind one of the villas and was originally a Romano-Celtic temple and mausoleum. It can be identified as a temple because of its large walled-in rectangular courtyard forming a typical temple cella. However, there are also kilns that were added during the 3rd century discovered along with the remains of bricks and tiles that were made at the site. 
Even the old walls were repurposed as a trackway, with the leftover material used to make the kilns. The eastern wall of the temple cella was partially destroyed to create an entrance to the factory. Destroying a sacred place in this manner would typically be viewed as an act of sacrilege, so archaeologists have no idea how the villa's owners got away with it. Now we head to Ethiopia to hear some colorful African legends. It's said that the lioness of Gobedra was seared into a hillside when the archangel Michael did battle with a wild lioness. You'll find the curious monument not far from the ancient city of Aksum, etched into the side of an isolated hill called Gobodura. The existence of the lioness was unknown to Westerners until it was observed by German archaeologists in 1913. The locals told the archaeologists that the image is the outline of an enormous lioness that Michael hurled into the hillside with such force that it left a permanent impression. Obviously, that isn't true, but nobody knows for sure how or when the artwork was created. It's probably safe to assume that it's been there for thousands of years. Some historians have speculated that it might have been created as a landmark to let people know they were headed in the right direction to reach Axum. That's a neat theory, but without direct evidence, there will never be any way of proving it. And it doesn't look like we're ever going to get any direct evidence. In February 2023, archaeologists in Utrera, Spain, went digging into the foundations of a bar and found the remains of a synagogue from the 14th century. That's significant for more reasons than the simple fact that the synagogue is old. Jewish people were forcibly expelled from Spain in 1492 and most of the country's synagogues were destroyed at the time. This newly discovered example becomes one of the only five that are known to have survived. It seems that rather than being destroyed, it was converted into the Hospital de la Misericordia. The conversion did surprisingly little damage to the original building. The entire prayer hall is still intact, as are the heckel and the perimeter bench. Because of this, the city council has now taken ownership of the building and plans to restore the original floor plan and walls insofar as is possible without damaging what's already there. The long-term plan is to open the old synagogue to the public, but excavation work is continuing for now because the team hopes it'll eventually find the woman's area of the synagogue and perhaps even its ritual bath. The Wreck of the Gribshunden a Norse ship of the 15th century was discovered by marine archaeologists a few years ago. It's a complicated wreck site, though, and there's still more to be found there. In February 2023, marine archaeologists confirmed that a cargo of spices, fruit, and plants was still in the wreck's cargo hold. The ship was the personal property of King Hans of Denmark and was on its way to an important political event in Sweden in 1495 when, for unknown reasons, a fire broke out aboard the ship and it sank. The royal status of the vessel explains why the goods aboard it were so exotic and valuable. There are more than 3,000 specimens inside these newly discovered containers, including saffron, ginger, almonds, peppercorns, mustard, nutmeg, and cloves. Many of the spices are from Indonesia, indicating that the Denmark of the time had a wide trade network. The grapes, blackberries, and raspberries that were also aboard were probably brought along to impress the king's guests. King Hans himself wasn't aboard the vessel at the time of the fire, so he lived to tell the tale. The Gribhunden would have been a very expensive loss for him, though. When seen from ground level, the Sakello Ipagaico in Pastum, Italy, isn't very impressive. That's because the only part of this ancient Greek temple that protrudes from the earth is its roof. The rest of the temple is underground. Pastrum was founded by Greeks from the colony of Sybaris 2,700 years ago. The Greeks called it Poseidonia, but it became Pastum during the Roman era. At some point during the Middle Ages, the town was abandoned for unknown reasons. Its ruins are an archaeological park today, and the main attractions in the park are its three temples. This underground temple is the most unusual of them and is technically known as a Heroon, which is a shrine dedicated to a hero of ancient Greeks. It hasn't stunk over the years, it was deliberately built underground and was once covered by tumulus. The tumulus was removed during the 1950s during archaeological excavations, 
It was hoped that the excavations would determine which hero the shrine was dedicated to, but despite being full of Greek pottery and bronze vessels, it offered no clues. There are larger Mayan sites in Mexico than Banampak, but none that are so perfectly preserved. If you want to experience the true color and vibrancy of Mayan artwork as it was originally intended to be seen, Banampak is where you want to go. The name is actually a perfect description for what you'll find here. Banampak translates out of Mayan as painted walls. The rainforests of Chiapas have proved to be the perfect hiding place for these murals, which are contained within just three rooms of an otherwise nondescript old ruin. The paintings cover every inch of space in the rooms, from the walls to the arched ceilings, they're roughly 1,200 years old, and depict various facets of Mayan life. From celebration to war, including some insight into what traditional Mayan ceremonies must have looked like. The exterior walls were also once painted in equally vivid styles, but time and weather have washed away the finer details. Since the rooms were opened to the public in the 1940s, they've begun to deteriorate. Restoration work is ongoing with public viewings limited to looking in through a window from the outside. It's hoped that the work being done now will keep the rooms around for future generations to enjoy. Our next artifacts don't have the most poetic of names. They're called the Cadiz Phoenician Anthropoid Sarcophagi. The kindest thing we can say about that title is it's both descriptive and accurate. There are two of the sarcophagi, and they were considered such an important discovery that a museum was built specifically to house them in Cadiz, Spain. However, they weren't both found at the same time. The first of them, the male sarcophagus, was found in the necropolis of Punta de la Vaca in 1887. It was this discovery of such a rare and stunning Phoenician artifact that prompted the creation of the museum. The noted 20th century Spanish archaeologist Paleo Quintero Atari theorized that a matching female sarcophagus might exist and spent years looking for it, but never found it. It was eventually discovered accidentally during construction work in 1980. Somewhat cruelly, the discovery took place mere yards from where Atari used to live. Both sarcophagi are made of marble and were carved around 2,500 years ago. The male wears a beard and wears a tunic and carries a grenade-like object in his hand. The female is younger and dressed plainly. The remains of reddish polychrome cling to her hair, so it's likely that both sarcophagi were once painted. Plenty of people visit Myanmar to immerse themselves in its ancient buildings and temples, but you won't find the Kaku Pagodas on the established tourist trail. If you want to find them, you have to venture off the beaten path. It's absolutely worth it, though. The many stupas that stand here were built and added to over hundreds of years, beginning in the 12th century and continuing into the 18th. The very largest is also one of the oldest and was made during the reign of Along Sithu, king of Bagan, as part of his commitment to creating new religious sites across his empire during his reign. In total, there are 2,478 pagodas at the site, when seen from above, they take the shape of the Buddha's footprint. The sheer number of the Kaku pagodas make maintenance difficult. Renovation work is always ongoing, but so are the effects of weathering. Some of the pagodas have been damaged beyond all prospect of repair by the earthquakes that blight this part of the world, but the larger and more elaborate of them were built to withstand such events. The green skeleton is precisely what it sounds like. It's a human skeleton, and it's green. We appreciate that you'd like a little more detail than that, though, so here it is. The unusual shade of this man's bones can be attributed to the fact that he spent thousands of years buried in a copper mine absorbing copper sulfate from his surroundings. He lived during the Bronze Age, and his remains can now be found in the Archaeological Museum of Asturias in Oviedo, Spain. Despite being buried in a mine, it's unlikely that this man was a miner. For reasons we don't understand, the high-ranking members of the ancient Asturian society during the Bronze Age were buried in disused mines. It's possible that their peers believe they were offering the remains of their venerated leaders to the gods of the earth in the hopes that they be rewarded with an abundance of natural resources, but that can't be proven. 
This was a time of great transition in Spain as the Asturians learned how to manipulate the world around them, and their funerary traditions changed just as much as every other aspect of their society. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.